Oh, madame. I'm looking for a policeman. I'm sorry, I really can't help no, you. A particular policeman. Why well, should try a police station? This is Boulevard Richard Lenoir. Yes. Yeah, I know he lives here. I've seen it in the newspapers. Maigret, Chief Inspector Maigret. I'm sorry, Monsieur. I really have no idea well, how I can. This is ridiculous. I was at school with him 40 years ago. He was even keen you on know, my sister. Now he's a famous detective, and I can't get hold of him. Monsieur. We were inseparable, close as close could be. Oh. My father owned the best baker shop in Moulin. Uh -huh. I used to give Jules cakes because uh, he couldn't afford them. For Jules. Jules. <laughs> Extraordinary. He's done so well. I knew he would. Always so serious. But, but I could make him laugh. Jules. You, you know, you've hardly changed at all, apart from the moustache, of course. Uh, this is Monsieur Florentin, an old school friend, I believe. Uh, would you like something to eat, Monsieur Florentin? I'm making dinner. Oh, Florentin. Thank you. Maybe a little something. So why have you done me the honor of getting in touch, Leon, after all these years? <laughs> One of your little jokes backfired, has it? Or do you want me to give you a reference for a job? I used to wonder if anyone would ever employ you. Has anyone ever taken that risk? Please. I'm a respectable man, an antiques dealer. Oh, resident clown in the Lycée Bonville. Most extraordinary thing was, you always managed to get away with it. So. Uh, so. Um, I, I have this woman friend. She's a marvelous girl. Uh, marvelous. We've been together for um, five years. And I've been everything to her. I've been a lover, friend, companion, really. Well, that sounds a thoroughly idyllic life you've been leading. Hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, the only thing is, um, I'm not the only one. There are four others. Four? Uh, one on uh, Wednesdays, one on Thursdays. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go on. Carry on. Uh, I'm the really important one. Of course. Uh, I was. Was? Josie was shot this afternoon. Th through the throat. In her apartment. She's dead. Where were you? I didn't do it for God's sake. So where were you? In her wardrobe. I used to stay there every night. Every night except Thursdays. She wouldn't let me stay Thursdays. So who visited on Thursdays? Who was allowed such special privileges? His name's Cassell. She'd known him for years, longer than any of us. Lives in Rouen. He has a ball bearing factory. Mm. What about today? Who was the Wednesday visitor? Francois Paré. He works for the Department of Highways and Bridges. Uh, he's in charge of bridges. You know, these are all very impressive sounding men, Leon. Men of substance. What was it you had that they didn't? That's because they were married and only could afford one afternoon a week, whereas you'd spend a lifetime looking for a soft option and found one at last. I don't think you ought to talk to me like this. I'm an old friend and I'm very upset. Yeah. Do all these men know each other? No. I'm the only one who knew there was anybody else. Well, let's do here. What exactly happened? Well, uh, we had a bit of lunch. And then uh, we chatted a bit, like we usually did. And um, about half past three, the doorbell rang. A Wednesday visitor. Oh, I shouldn't think so. He didn't usually come till 5.30 or, or 6. I always made sure I wasn't here then. Anyway, I couldn't hear because I was in the wardrobe. What, this one? No, no. Through here. Did you often end up in here, Leon? Only when somebody arrived unexpectedly. They usually kept fixed hours, you see. Not much sign of your clothes. She was meant to be living here alone. Of course. And you wouldn't want her protectors to think that they were keeping you as well. That's not fair. How long were you stuck in here? 
about a um, quarter of an hour till I had the shot. What did you do? Run into the bedroom? No, no, no. no I stayed in here. It could have been a car backfiring. Or well, you might have got shot too. So you just stayed in there drinking until he'd gone? How did you know when the coast was clear? I heard the front door close. That would have been about um, four. After you. So whoever it was waited a quarter of an hour before he left while you quietly drank your way through the rest of the brandy. Well, yeah. Josephine obviously had a sweet tooth. Chocolates, sweets, biscuits. Yes, yes, she certainly did. Mate Gray, which floor? Yes. You did hear me, madame. What's he done, this Mate Gray? Murdered someone? There's a lot of police upstairs. Look up. Get my friend into the car, one. You're not going to arrest me? Not yet. Didn't he do it, then? Madame, that gentleman has just left. Did you see him earlier today? <laughs> gentleman? <laughs> yes. Yes, I did. When exactly? Uh, when he came running down the stairs. When? Just after four, about, um, about 20 pounds. Did you see anyone going to Mademoiselle Pape's apartment between half past three and four? Half past three and four? No. Which would have seen them if they had? Oh, yes. Did you see anyone else go up to the apartment at any time during the afternoon, madame? No, no one. Oh, except the Wednesday visitor. Monsieur Parry. I don't know the name. All I know is they turn up regular as clockwork every week. He's Wednesday. Comes just before six. How long did he stay up there? He didn't. Came straight down. You're quite sure about that? Of course. Did he say anything to you when he came down? Say anything? He might have done. But if he did, I wasn't listening. Well, thank you very much, madame. You've been most helpful. Luca. Oi! Wait! I want to know what you're going to do with me. Jules! Jules! Get him back to the car and gag him. You, you don't really think I killed a dude? Why would I come to you? Who knows? Oh, you're, you're mad. Or oh, you are. Have you told me everything, Leon? Of course. Why would I lie to you? Oh, you've lied to everyone else. Why should I be the exception? Because this is different. It's a matter of life and death. What did Monsieur Paré look like? I've told you, he, he was about my age. Tall, balding, a, a real civil servant. Did he take Josephine out in the evening? Or didn't she tell you things like that? Of course, she told me everything. There was, a, there was a brasserie on the corner of uh, Boulevard Saint-Germain and uh, Rue Solferino. <laughs> he wasn't very smart, but uh, he seemed to like going there for some reason. Luca. Hey. What's going on? What's up? So what about the other lovers? I don't know much about them, really. Don't you? I thought Josephine told you everything. But one of the men a limp. He was about 60, I suppose. He used to come on Saturdays after lunch. I don't think she knew much about him either. Oh, why don't she tell me she found a, a season ticket? Paris Bordeaux. And the fourth? I never saw him. He was younger. She used to call him the boy. Where are we going? To your office. I'd like to see your office. Oh, no, no. We're going to your place, Leon. Just take your time, Monsieur Paré. This is where we first met. She was at this table. Just over three years ago. She was here. And I was sitting... 
There. I used to come here every day after work for a glass or two of port before venturing home to Versailles. You need a couple of drinks before going home, do you, Monsieur Parry? My wife's been very sick. I've never been unfaithful before, you know. Jose and I, we weren't simply lovers, we... And I suppose the most wonderful thing was we could talk to each other. To be frank, well, we weren't really lovers, not in the strict sense of the word. But she was so gentle, so serene. One could open one's heart to her, and she could to me. The last three years I've lived for Wednesday evening, you know. It's my business, you see? Antiques. You have done well. What are you looking for? Who knows? Found something, Chief. Were you aware of her having, uh, well, how shall I put it, any other friends, Monsieur Paré? No. No, I, I can't say that I was. She lived a very quiet life. <coughs> I'd have come to see her more often, but, well, my wife, she gets more jealous by the year. It was hard enough to find an excuse to stay in Paris one evening a week. Well, you weren't jealous of Jose in any way? No, why should I be? She never gave me cause. Well, I was of her brother, I suppose, briefly. A brother? Yes. I happened to arrive early one Wednesday evening, and he was there. In fact, he's a very interesting and pleasant man. He's an engineer, apparently. Is he tall, thin, rather scruffy-looking? Yes. You've seen him already. Of course you have. He was very upset, I imagine. You could say that. Was there anyone else that you um, wondered about? Well, a few weeks ago, I was coming up the stairs and I saw someone come out of her apartment. A young man, dark haired, rather full of himself, I thought. Don't tell me you've seen him too. Just tell me what you know, Monsieur Parry. I see you both share the same taste in biscuits, you and Josephine. What an unusual place to keep them, under the bed. Ah. My word. You know, I've known people who are so addicted to sweets and chocolates, they were forced to hide them in all sorts of unusual places. How much altogether? About 400,000 francs. It's my savings. Josephine, Papa's savings, you mean? No. Why don't you know exactly how much there is? I told you. Count it. No. Count it? No! You stole this money from Josephine Papa's apartment this afternoon, didn't you? No. You took advantage of your lover's death to steal her life savings. You stashed it here before you came to see me. No. You know, your lying is quite endearing, Leon, in a disgusting sort of way. <sighs> All right, I know I must. Look, I didn't kill Jose. I was in the wardrobe, as I said. Anyway, the money's mine by right. She's got no family. Who else would it go to? I'm on my uppers. I've given her the best years of my life. You know, I'm going to let you go, Leon. Maybe it's because of my childhood memories, I don't know, or maybe just because I'm getting soft in the head. Anyway, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Good night. What did you do that for, Chief? You must have killed her. You stay here. Hide the car around the corner. If he comes out, follow him. Good night, Lapointe.
I know you've not denied it. Well, what was it? Attempted suicide? Denied, sir. Well, what else would it be? Look, if you the only woman he's ever loved has been murdered. He's got no money, no Inspector future. Maygrave. Yes, as soon as possible. That's true. He did say she if was the love of his or life, or vice versa. Everything would be a bit easier. Everything would be a bit easier. So he tries to drown well, himself. I'm sorry if you find that offensive. It's the same offensive. by the Quai de la Magistrie. It's All those not meant to be, I assure you. Stupid as well as suicidal. Yeah. Jeez, again. He was always a good swimmer at school. You can't be tired. You only just got here. I've tracked Victor down. Well done. I had to get a list of season ticket holders from the station at Bordeaux. Now, you wouldn't think that was difficult, would you? But I had to get down on my knees, petty, jumped-up bureaucrat. Sorry. Victor Drouet. His name's Victor Drouet, and he's a big wine grower. Very big. Probably spends too much time in his cellar. Thank you. Married money. It's his wife's father's business. And when he's in Paris, he stays at the Hotel Scribe. And he's coming to see you in half an hour, Chief. Oh, thanks. Rather you than me. I've already had a near full then. You've done a good job, old son. Show my appreciation. I've got another little task for you. The young lover. Bodo. Bodo. Jean-Luc Bodo. Called into Paris. He's an insurance salesman. Works for Continental with offices on the Avenue de l'Opera. How do you know all that? Jealousy. He saw Bodo coming out of the apartment one day. He must have pestered poor Josephine so much he eventually gave him his visiting card. To prove there was nothing naughty going on. And he believed her. Says he did. But you don't believe him. Oh, well, put it this way, Chief. He'd have to be very trusting, wouldn't he? He sounds a bit of a liar. Just like a lot of people around here. Right. Oh, that's Florentine. Dried out, yeah? It's all come as such a shock to me, Monsieur Cousin. We were very close, as you know, my sister and I. Yes. Yes, it must be terrible. What makes it particularly bad is, you recall that hotel development I told you about in the south of France, the one I was hoping to design? The one I lent you 300,000 francs for, yes. That makes it worse. You see, I've invested every penny I own, land registration, plans, you name it. It's only a temporary problem, but I, I, I've got no money at all, no cash at all. Not even enough for my... Sister's funeral. Oh, dear. You poor fellow. How terrible. Look, don't worry. It really can't be helped that you mustn't worry. Not at a time like this. Here. You've always been very kind, Monsieur Cassel. No, 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 please. Ah, Florentin. Your old friend wants to see you. And you are? Um, Fernand Cassel of Cassel Ball Bearings, Rouen. I heard the terrible news of Josephine Pape's death on the wireless this morning. I, I was a... Uh, I knew the deceased quite well. <coughs> so I believe. You stay here. We'll see you later. This way, sir. I'd known her for ten years. I found the apartment for her. We lived there together for quite a while, you know. <laughs> Long time ago now. I was passionately in love with her. Well, I suppose I always have been. In fact, well, it was a very passionate affair in every sense of the word. But you married somebody else. Well, there was the factory. It's taken up so much of my life and given back precious little. Only last year I thought we might have to close. Well, Josie was a marvelous woman, but she loved living here. She didn't want to move to Rouen. Why didn't you persuade her if you loved her so much? I don't know. She would have done for me, I'm sure, but... Uh, well, it seemed the best arrangement for both of us. Extraordinary. We were both quite happy with it, really. And, of course, it meant that she could see her brother. A brother? Oh, yes. Yes, when he got back from Uruguay. Uruguay. I beg your pardon? Well, he was there on a government contract to build a new town. He's an architect. He got back, um, oh, about four years ago. <laughs> they were very close. You, you have met her brother. Oh, you must have done. He's... Monsieur Corsell. I, I only wish she'd been as close to her other brothers and Monsieur sisters. Monsieur Corsell, I'm sorry to have to tell you, but Josephine Pape had no brothers and no sisters. 
What do you mean? That's absurd. What about Leon? Leon Pape's real name is Leon Florentin. He's lived with Josephine Pape for the past four years. <laughs> but that's not possible. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, but someone's been making a fool of you, Chief Inspector. You see, I used to stay with her every Thursday night. In fact, I was driving up here yesterday afternoon. Between three and four o'clock? What? Where were you between three and four o'clock, monsieur? Well, I was in my car on my way here, uh, as I am at that time every week. Were you on your own? Well, of course. Who would I be with? Monsieur Cossel, a woman has been murdered. You said yourself you'd known her for ten years, longer than any of our other lovers. What other lovers? Are you telling me you spent ten years in total ignorance of the sort of woman she was? What other lovers? Answer my question. There were five, including yourself. No. No, that's not possible. I, 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 I refuse I, to believe you had no knowledge of what was going on. You're not a stupid man. Or are you telling me you've been entirely blinded by love for ten years? I think you knew something was wrong for years. It had been eating away at you. You knew Josephine had been double-crossing you. You became increasingly bitter and resentful. After all, you'd done more for her than anyone. You'd even found her the apartment she lived in. And what did she do? She entertained her other lovers in it while you weren't there. No! One day something happened. Something snapped. Something trivial. I don't know what. But you lost control. You killed her. I'm not saying it was planned. You give me the details, it'll be easy for you in the end. Leon did it. The bastard he must have done. After all I'd done for Oi. him. Get off me. Let me go. That'll be all for the moment, Monsieur Corsell. Take him out of the building, Luca. The back way. Come on, sir. What do you expect me to say? Hmm. I'm just impressed by your fertile imagination. What else did he tell you? It was confirmed that Josephine Pape has just as vivid imagination as you. You know, I'm not surprised the two of you got on so well. Did he also tell you that I haven't got any money, not a centime? No, that didn't come up in conversation. I can't think why. It's not a joke. I haven't got anything. You took all my money. Josephine's money. I haven't even got the price of a meal. It's true. Search me. I'd rather not. What am I going to do? Make it last. Can I go? Can't think what you're doing here in the first place. Well, a point I'm going to have to ask you to follow Monsieur Florentin once again, I'm afraid. Sorry. Oh, make sure he doesn't fall in the water. Oh, by the way, Leon, do you own a revolver? Yes, I bought it for Josie. Really? <clears throat> Very old. I found it at the bottom of a trunk. I got it to sale two years ago. Do you keep it loaded? Yes. I told her to put it in her bedside drawer so she wouldn't be nervous when I was away. Oh, I wouldn't have thought she'd have much to be nervous about, the number of people she entertains in her apartment. Hmm. You know it's not there now? I know. I looked. You looked? Why? Because it's mine. If anybody found it, I'd be in trouble. Well, you're in trouble now. More trouble than you've ever been in. I've always been in trouble. You remember? But I was got off. And I will this time, you see, because I'm innocent. Perhaps. Right, then. Not too fast for you? How long did you know Josephine Pepe? I read about it, you know, in the paper this morning. Five lines. <laughs> Five lines. Three months. I met her three months ago. She was a nice woman. Very nice. A bit old. But... Anyway, I was trying to sell her an accident policy. 
fact that I got quite close in getting her to sign. Then, well, we got distracted. You know how it is. I'm a happily married man, Monsieur Baudin. Yes, of course you are. She was fun, though. Just wanted a good time. No commitment. The older ones are often like that. Makes them feel they're still young, I suppose. Ideal. Did you have a special time when you went there? Good God, no. I'm not turning up at special times. What do you think I am? Be like going to the dentist. Was there ever anyone else there when you arrived? No, well, just a human scarecrow. They all were shot off when I turned up. Personally, I could never see why she stuck with him. He says they're deeply in love with each other. Well, from what she said to me, I'd say it was because he was better than nothing, just. Isn't that rather what you'd expect her to say to you? Sure. Spot on. Except, I don't mean to brag, but if she was so mad about him, why didn't she ask me to move in with her? Hmm? I went to see her every Saturday afternoon between three and five. Then I took a Bordeaux Express back to my wife. I'm a man of regular habits, Chief Inspector. What were you doing yesterday afternoon, Monsieur Drouet, between three and four? I was taking a walk along the Grand Boulevard. I take a walk every weekday between 10 and 11 and 3 and 4 in the afternoon on doctor's orders. Ask anyone in my office. But no one from your office was with you? Of course not. You realize this leaves you without an alibi? Do I need one? You most certainly do as one of Josephine's lovers. One of them? How many of us were there? Four, I believe. Plus the man she lived with. <laughs> what did she mean to you? She provided relaxation. I need relaxation. She was discreet. It was more than a business arrangement, but... But not much more. I used to have a mistress, a former secretary. Unfortunately, she decided to get married four years ago. Luckily, I met Josephine shortly afterwards. So there was a vacancy to be filled. Oh, I didn't come here for a moral lecture, Chief Inspector. If you'll excuse me, I've already had to rearrange several meetings as it is. So unless there's something urgent to discuss, I'll bid you good day. I want you to be here at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, Monsieur Drouet. If you can juggle your appointments to fit me in. So, Janvier doesn't think that Baudard killed her. Janvier is biased. Baudard reminds him of his lost youth, or the youth he never got round to having. But even Janvier admits Baudard hasn't got an alibi. So what's he say he was doing? Ah, he says he just sold a couple of life insurance policies, went out to celebrate, got blind drunk, but he can't remember where. <laughs> the fact is, none of them has an alibi. Well, that's not true. Paré has. The whole of his office swears he was in all afternoon. Let's see if you can believe the word of a bunch of civil servants. Threaten them with a cut in their paper clip supplies, they'd swear to anything. Why are you so irritable about it? Is it because you haven't arrested Leon? You think I should, don't you? Everyone else does. Oh, I don't know. He seems rather helpless, doesn't he, poor man? I, on the other hand, you said he needs the money, but he's the only one with the obvious motive. As before Bodar came along, he's certainly got a motive. He needs money. He spends money like water. But it wasn't premeditated. If it was a crime of passion... Then it must have been someone who was familiar, a familiar visitor who knew she kept a revolver in her bedside drawer. Have you kept any of my letters to you? No, I have. The few that there were. Uh, Josephine must have had hundreds, don't you think? I've searched her apartment high and low, can't find one. Well, why don't you ask the lovers what she did with them? Brilliant! Thank you! That's exactly what I plan to do. I'm seeing them all tomorrow morning at 10. Ha <laughs> ha. Congratulations. Seems you've developed a sense of humor. Unusual. It's taken you 40 years. <laughs> Who'd have thought it? 
Despite Monsieur Florentin's flippancy, gentlemen, I've asked you here for a very serious reason. Josephine Pape is dead. I believe one of you killed her. I protest. I also believe another one of you knows who the murderer is. But for a reason I don't yet understand, you're keeping that knowledge to yourself. It might surprise you to learn that Josephine was not on her own when the murderer arrived. Would you mind telling us what you heard from inside the wardrobe, Monsieur Florentin? Not much. How long did the murderer stay in the apartment after you heard the shot? About a quarter of an hour. So what do you suppose he was looking for? Any ideas? Could it have been Josephine's money? Maybe it was something else. Maybe it was the letters he wrote her, possibly incriminating letters. I'm sure you've all written her letters. Maybe harmless ones, changing the time of an appointment. Who knows? But letters which, in the wrong hands, might have torn apart the nice, secure fabric of your life. Good God! Do I look the sort of man who'd stoop to that sort of thing? Most murderers I've met look like most other people, Monsieur Corsell. I've had enough of this. More than enough. I've got impossible pressures of work. I don't need these insults. You accuse me of murdering Jose and think you can get away with it? Sit down, Monsieur Corsell. Now, I'm not so naive as to imagine that one of you is going to stand up and confess. Although if the man who knows who the murderer is were to come to see me, it would be to his benefit. No? Never mind. There is someone else. Someone who also knows who the murderer is. I believe you've seen all these gentlemen before, madame. Would you mind looking at their faces? Now, which of them did you see coming out of the apartment building between 3 and 4 on Wednesday afternoon? Has one of them been trying to intimidate you? You do know what intimidate means, do you? Threaten you if you talk. You're quite safe here, I promise you. I'm not stupid. And I'm not paid to do your job for you. I've nothing to say. You can't frighten me. <laughs> What do you expect, there, Earl? I don't know. I thought one of them might panic, give me some sign. So where do we go now? They all keep their mouths shut. Back to the concierge. You really think she knows who the murderer is? If we still don't get anything from her, I'll have to arrest Leon, which maybe I should have done in the first place. <laughs> You didn't get up to much that afternoon. Not in the bed, at any rate. What did forensics say about the fingerprints in the bedroom? There weren't any. None at all? No. Get Leon in my office straight away. Go on, then. You didn't see the murderer? 
No. You didn't recognize his voice? No. They were in the bedroom. Yes, I could hear that. The bed's untouched. So they didn't go in for their usual purpose. So why did they? Why didn't they just stay in the living room and have their chat in there? Perhaps he came for the letters, the letters you mentioned. Perhaps he came to get them. Why didn't she give them to him? After all, the lovers gave her generous allowances. Why would she want to blackmail one of them as well? I don't know. Oh, she's dead, I don't know. The drawer's slightly open. Yes, I did that. I opened it to see if the gun was still there. I, I, I've told you all this. There are no fingerprints. Perhaps the murderer... I didn't murder her. Yes, so you keep saying, but you won't tell me who did. I don't know who did. Why'd you jump in the river, Lane? Because I'd had enough of everything. I didn't want to live. Isn't that understandable? I'd just lost the only person in the world who ever... <laughs> <laughs> what's, the... what's funny? <laughs> what's funny? You are. How about this for a different version? You knew we were following you. You'd hidden the money back at your place, but you'd forgotten about the letters. What letters? What letters? The letters you'd taken from Josephine's bedroom, they were in your pocket. You knew we were watching you closely. What better way to get rid of them but by jumping in the river? That's ridiculous. Ridiculous. When did your notice expire, Lyle? What? To get out of Josephine's apartment, quit her life. She didn't want to get rid of me. She was desperate for me to stay, what you're talking about. She loved me, I told you. That's not what young Bodar says. He said she wanted you out so he could move in. And you believe him rather than me. Oh, why should I think he's a born liar like you? Why shouldn't I believe him? I think she wanted a new model, someone who was less devious and less greedy. Megre. Oh, damn. Oh, get back to the apartment, Jean Vier. Wait for her there. Yeah. Nearly five. Apart. I want you to make contact with Monsieur Florentin's rivals. Mm -hmm. Now, don't speak to any of them except me. Just make sure they're still there. And ask if anyone answering the concierge's description has been to see any one of them. OK. Luca, come. You don't think the concierge murdered Josephine Pierre? No, I think she's going to meet someone. Who, the murderer? I thought we had him under lock and key back at the station. No, I don't think Leon Florentin killed her, Luca. He didn't? But I'm pretty sure the concierge knows who did. She saw the murderer coming out. He probably offered her money there and then to keep her quiet. If he'd already given her money, why should she want to see him again? Perhaps because she saw him with the others this morning and realized her silence was worth a hell of a sight more than he'd given her for it. She's just come back. She nodded to me and smiled as she went in. At least you won't be able to lose me this time, will you, Inspector? Chief, looks like you were right. Hidden away in this magazine. Five thousand francs, madam. They're my savings. Oh, really, are they? In brand new notes? And what an unusual place to keep them. Who gave them to you? I assume this is the first payment. Well, thank you, madame. I'll certainly bear in mind your help and cooperation throughout this case. Hello. Oh, it's you. What, not even Buddha? Right, thanks, Dupont. I was going to say, particularly if we come to prosecute you for blackmail. You are aware blackmail is illegal, aren't you? Even blackmailing a murderer. I've blackmailed no one. Well, if that's so, it's only because you couldn't make contact with him. Bit naive, wasn't it? 
bit optimistic, surely. Established, successful men. Did you really think you'd manage to get hold of one of them in Paris late on a Friday afternoon? Unless it was young Bodo. Perhaps it was Bodo. They say he was still in Paris on his... What is it, Chief? He's got good news for you. What news? What news? If you cooperate with us, Leon, I think I can promise you you won't go to the guillotine. I told you I didn't kill... Kill Josephine Pape? Of course. You see, I might believe it. Who knows? Even my friend Luca here might believe it at a pinch. You see, but to get a jury to believe it, you need proof, a coherent story, not the load of lies and half-truths you've fobbed me off with so far. Now, let's try and work out what really happened. I'll start at the beginning. You stop me when I go wrong. On Wednesday afternoon, you had an unexpected visitor. Hmm? We agree on that point, at least. But what was really unexpected was that he'd come to see you, not Josephine. He was angry, probably very angry. After all, he wasn't used to being blackmailed. He felt he'd given Josephine a lot over the years. Behaved decently after his fashion. After all, the affair had harmed no one, so why should he be expected to pay so dearly for it? So he decided to have it out with you. I don't think he came to kill anyone. Because, you see, he didn't have a weapon with him. He looked as if he did. You tried to hide, he found you and dragged you into the bedroom. All right! I wanted half a million francs for his letters. I needed it, Jules. I'm 53. I'm not a boy anymore. What would it have meant to him? Anyway, how would I survive on my own otherwise? So Josephine was going to chuck you out because of Bodder? Jambier, bring him in. I have never received such treatment, having been dragged from Bordeaux by two great thugs of policemen. Greg? Not me, Chief. Must be the other thug he's talking about. How dare you be so impertinent. You know I had to share the same compartment with the two of them the whole night, and I'd hardly been home. Oh, of course. You must have been looking forward to that, Monsieur Drouet. A Friday night at home. When was the last time you managed one of those? Of course, you didn't think of that when you killed Josephine Pape, did you? There was no need to stay in Paris till Saturday then, was there? No more Saturday visits. Of course, the concierge didn't think of that when she tried to contact you yesterday afternoon. What are you talking about? I didn't see the concierge. I was on the train. Exactly. For once, you were on the train. But the concierge didn't think it through, did she? Why should she? Any more than I did. She didn't realize you'd be buzzing back to your wife and kids like all the other respectable businessmen. After all, you never had done before. Oh, you know, you not being there was what put me on to you. You've no evidence. You're going to regret this, Maigret. You've no evidence whatsoever. There's your culprit. It's obvious. Obvious to anyone. Not to me it isn't, you stupid, lying, pompous idiot. I've confessed to blackmailing you for the letters. I'm damned if I'm going to be done for doing the murder as well, particularly as I saw your shooter. You're not going to believe the word of a common criminal, a self-confessed blackmailer. What do you say, Leon? Why should I believe you? Because he was desperate to get those letters. He'd have lost everything if his wife had seen them. It was her family business, you see. He wouldn't just have lost his wife. He'd have lost all his money, too. That's what really mattered to him. But he was so stupid, he thought he only had to shout loudly enough I'd give him the letters without any money. No, you see, it's precisely because Leon is a blackmailer that I believe him. I mean, if I wanted to blackmail one of Josephine's lovers, who would I choose? Monsieur Perret? No. He's a civil servant on a civil servant's salary. Monsieur Corsell, well, he's struggling to keep a factory open. How about young Bodar? He doesn't have much. He's an insurance salesman. No, I'm afraid it all points to you, Monsieur Drouet. No, I'm afraid you're the only one amongst them who has any money at all to speak of. It's a complete fabrication. I deny all knowledge of any letters. As soon as he realized I wasn't going to give him the letters, he went mad. He lost control completely. He went straight to the bedside drawer and got hold of the gun. And shot Jose? Yes. Why would I do that? She wasn't blackmailing me. He, he didn't mean to shoot her. 
I could see straight away I had no idea how to handle a gun. And Josie was, was hysterical. She came between us and she tried, she tried to stop him. He was waving the gun and shouting. He was almost as hysterical as she was. I was almost on the point of giving him the damn letters when the gun went off. <laughs> I'm not given to hysteria, Chief Inspector. I'd have thought that obvious. He's the unstable one. Just look at him. It was terrible, terrible. And she was dying, lying on the floor. He's clearly unwell. I doubt if he's even responsible for his actions. What happened then, Leo? Um, he went off. And then? Um, I, I don't remember. I was in a daze. And even though you were in a daze, you still carefully went round the room and cleaned all the fingerprints up. Why would I do that? Because once he was identified, he'd be of no more use to you. Isn't that right? A man as rich as you, monsieur, desperate to hide a murder. Now, there was a chance for Leon to make real money. He could squeeze you for as much as he could get. He could have more money than he ever dreamt of. But even money only buys so much. Even a compulsive liar, thief, and blackmailer like Leon Florentin has his limits. No. I'm afraid you're not going to get him to stand in for a murder that you committed. Not for all the money in the world. So you served him well. Oh, Leon? Oh, yes, of course, you know. I was just thinking everyone used to bail him out even then. You know, I think in all honesty, I can claim I've done particularly well by him, considering he was using a non-existent friendship for protection. Non-existent? Yes, never existed. Oh. I put in a word, probably get a couple of years, which isn't bad considering he's been involved with attempted blackmail, obstructing the police, being accessory after the fact. And what about Drouet? Ah, oh, it wasn't premeditated. It was an accident or extenuating circumstances. And he's got a particularly good lawyer. Precisely, yes. What did you mean by oh? Pardon? You said oh. I said it was non-existent friendship. You said non-existent. I said yes. It never existed. And you said oh. Did I? Well, I suppose what I meant was, well, if it, I mean, if it never existed, not at all, then how did you know his sister? How keen on her were you? He told you that. Were you in love with her? <laughs> You're jealous. <laughs> I'm not. Don't be ridiculous. After all these years. That's ridiculous. I'm just curious. <laughs> Good old lamb. Here's to you, son. Mm -hmm. 